implement it also. So they are scared. So this fellow was you know newly married or getting married and all his friends uh, said you know the last party to your freedom <coughs> because marriage is where you lose your bachelors and she gains her masters so the final uh, party to your freedom <coughs> so they had a party and this fellow was getting too tense to listening to the stories of all his friends um, so the most wise looking among his friends most experienced wise looking one he goes and he says tell me you know what is that one thing that if you knew right on the day that you were married you would have implemented and it would have saved you uh, tons of effort in your relationship with your wife so he thought for a while and he said you know do one thing right from the first day for every silly little thing call out loud on her scream at her and threaten her where is my tea bring it right now or else that will set the tone for the entire life this fellow he wanted to experiment it on the first day so he got up and uh, he said and she was you know just she also had just gotten up she had just freshened up and khadi uh, kyao where is my tea get it right now or else so she was like oh, what is this she rushes down and you know the gets a the, the trembling hands comes back and uh, this is the chai so this happens every single day every single opportunity he gets this is the interaction this is the modus operandi <coughs> after uh, about 5 6 years she has chinku minku tinku pinku uh her in-laws had also visited her parents also had come in and her uh, brother in law sister in law all of them the house was packed and she being the uh, householder i mean in her house so every responsibility was on her shoulder and that day early morning this fellow is on a towel and he says is my hot water ready and 6 years into marriage you know that this fellow is only screaming type and that day she is so ticked off that enough is enough she says uh, or else what what will you do and she also raised her voice so this fellow he was not prepared for this he was not trained for it so when you are not trained for a kind of path then even a simple thing can topple you off you can observe in the restaurants here ask them uh, get me a glass of water without ice with uh, if possible a piece of lemon in it they said come again what because they are not trained for it they need three keywords water no ice with lemon Oh, gotcha! <laughs> the same thing. Put it in a sentence format. They are lost. So the husband here, uh, he was never. Uh, uh, he, he, always it worked like a charm. So he asked for one bucket of hot water, and this lady was so ticked off that day, and she said, "What hot water? You know, or else what will you do?" So he is like, "I'll take bath with the cold water." <laughs> whenever there is an oral and if you don't follow it through it always can have a, a boomerang effect so sishtakrit that he not only is the one who is the law maker why does things why do things function in the way they function why does fire burn 
that is its nature who created it that way whoever created it that is whom we call or refer to as god in a no fire zone if there is fire so what do you do you pour water why water extinguishes fire who created that water with that particular nature that it exists with whoever created it it is that is whom we refer to as god that is its basic nature so he creates the universe he creates every single element every single particle every single thing and being and their nature is also decided now we have fire and water just taking an example fire will burn you see you know in the in the recent yap course we had all the devis from dallas who had come there to cook <clears throat> they are all uh, gigantic burners like the uh, put it in, uh, in the smallest capacity and it would still boil water in like you know 40 seconds it is that big burners and there are six or eight of them eight of them <coughs> huge and uh, these ammas would come with their uh, chudidar chunni everything and then uh, uh, okay sometimes here sometimes there uh, dancing and singing uh, but take the chunni off put an apron on tie things in proper place we will handle it swami ji and then the very next day you <laughs> burn what happened try to handle it and i was no better a long time ago, when i was very young about 2 3 years old my parents used to always tell warn me do not because just before leaving to office you know, they would iron their clothes and it was on a table <coughs> not reachable with a uh, for a kid of the very few memories of that 3 year old this is one strong memory that i have one day probably they were all busy i saw that thing that was being always kept away from me and that became a challenge for me so as a 3 year old i grabbed the chair pulled it all the way into that room put it comfortably next to the table managed to climb over that chair somehow managed to climb over to the table <sighs> a sense of accomplishment <clears throat> if anybody knew what it felt like on the on the uh, uh, top of everest that is how i felt that day so i sat there and then i looked at that iron thing that the black thing that was there i held it and then put it in my lap <laughs> and the sirens and the wireless and the ganga yamuna saraswati uh at that i remember very clearly so from then on <coughs> for anything mischievous that i was you know until what 5 6 years old that i was next 3 years my torture chamber was that room so they would say do anything or nonsense will put you in that room with that iron and that would scare the living daylights out of me because i had the experience up until then they were telling me that fire burns and then, uh, now so those who know how to handle it you can iron clothes 
those who know how to use that fire you can you can create a locomotive you can create enough pressure of that steam and you can use tap into that potential energy there make it into a kinetic energy or mechanical energy kinetic energy huh. and then a locomotive is created if you know how to handle that fire you go against it you will have memories for lifetime not just internally externally also isn't it shishtakrit the one who implements the laws and also immediately there is a result of it shishtakrit therefore <coughs> do not get lost in trying to be good or trying not to be bad rather reach to that wherein from wherein you can find both goodness and badness as two sides of the same coin where do we have to reach to that state of shuchihi shuchihi absolute purity wherein it cannot be a blemish of duality either if there is silence it can is always vulnerable to sound and those who are constantly habituated to sound they cannot stand silence imagine your experience the first time when you came from india and you were put in uh, your friend's house and the night is still young i mean because the sunset is at 9 o'clock 9:30 but on the streets there is not even a single soul occasional car that passes by that's all and your friends they've gone for job you know they put me in saket <coughs> and the as the night approaches you know after 10 10:30 the building starts making weird sounds because it has expanded now it is contracting and uh, it is so silent that every creaking sound is amplified into your ears and you're sitting there like <laughs> you already have a jet lag and it's a totally you know they call it sannata so silent i should tell you my other experience in about uh, three cities my father's workplace was next to the airport so for about three and a half years sleep meant that i should be hearing uh, the the airport uh, hangers Uh, a different kind of a hangar wherein they they do a lot of maintenance of these big big jets a constant rattling sound all through the night after 3 and 1/2 years in three different cities in three airports almost it felt like living in an airport suddenly shifted to a remote place away from the city in in middle of all boulders and uh, mountains and uh, for you know how much ever you can see not a twinkling light anywhere first 2 3 months was such a pain so i had devised a table fan with a paper that it rotates and it keeps you know beating onto that paper making that sound and then i would sleep it is a constant make that sound because the absence of sound is still vulnerable a 
शुचि ही दैट हाइट ऑफ प्योरिटी विच इज नॉट इवन कंटेमिनेटेड बाय ड्यूएलिटीज पोलैरिटीज ऑफ दी वर्ल्ड एंड इट्स वर्ल्डिनेस दैट शुड बी द गोल दैट शुड बी द एम एंड दैट इज वेयर इज द कोर ऑफ वन सोन बीइंग which is beyond which is unaffected by any of these polarities and the one who has gained this immaculate state within is called siddhartha siddha arthah the one who has accomplished that for which life is meant to be not caught up in unnecessary whinings of worldliness unless we are prepared this statement will not sink in i gave you the other day the example of narad ji who wanted to see maya and her, and its effects complete effect that he took a sukara roop sukara roop the bor and he refused to come out of it so each one embedded where we are what would appear prior, as the highest priority depending on what vasanas that we have trained ourselves to exist in so far therefore satsang must be a constant companion to change that conditioning constantly be with the satpurusha satsang sat uh, what do you call sat grantha sat shravana sat manana constant churning of it is a must to change that conditioning when you reach to a point enough of this let me get out of it until that burning desire is born to understand life and its purpose how many ever times we hear it it's like uh, to the deaf ears <clears throat> so what is the purpose of life it may be reaching it may be not reaching but still siddha arthah arthah purposefulness siddha the one who has accomplished it and what is that accomplishment to be abiding in the self as the self and reveling in the self there is no more uh, you know aims of life goals of life now such persons very existence is the extension of that experience which is nothing but highest state of happiness or bliss whatever such mahatma does is for only one purpose to reach out to the masses and give everyone at that point you are not looking at whether they are qualified or not you have in such abundance that you see you need to give And if they are not qualified they will not relish it anyway so once gurudev was asked do you know that this this upanishads and everything that you are speaking on is like you know beautiful uh, diamonds you are throwing into the masses and they will lose its purpose so he his standpoint was that all the diamonds that i have he is talking about his blissful nature i don't mind losing it if i speak in 100 cities 
and in his talks there were at least uh, about 10, 15, 20,000 people, minimum 10,000 people, so 100 cities. So how many people? You can tell in millions, right? So of these 10 million people, even if it hits one person and reach to that ultimate, my being here is justified. How many millions has he touched? Siddhartha, the one who has accomplished the very purpose of life and its existence. <clears throat> Siddha Sankalpaha. There are at times when, you know, even in your day to day life, sometimes, I call this by mistake only. If you are from Bombay, galti se mistake ho gaya. You think of something and it happens. Has it ever happened to you? Not big, big things, they are small things. You are so tired and you put in a real hard day's work and you have a sudden craving. You know, today I should have sugar cane juice. And your friend stops by saying that, you know, I had stopped at the grocery store and they were having this fresh sugar cane juice. I don't know, I wanted to, you know, spend some time and so I brought in some sugar cane juice. He's like, you know, I was just thinking of that right now. What happens is whenever we are connected with our own sattvic nature, purest nature, Suchi, when we are connected, every thought carries the potentiality of fulfillment. But it is a catch-22. As long as you have this intention to reach to the sattvic state so that every single full, uh, thought or desire finds its fulfillment, then you never reach sattvic nature. You never connect to the sattvic nature. Having connected to that sattvic nature, there is no more desire. <laughs> You know, we read, uh, most of you must have read this. Every single seeker should have read it. Because that is very enticing uh, introduction into spirituality. Autobiography of a Yogi. Have you read that book? <coughs> there, you know, his father, Yoganandji's father, purchases an ointment. Because his sister had an abscess on her foot or hand, wherever it was. And uh, she had applied it. Uh, and they observed him applying it in couple of spots on his body. The father said, why are you wasting it? So he said, this is for those uh, boils that will come for tomorrow that I am applying the medicine today itself. And by the time morning wake up, there were exact spots, there were boils, big, big ones. He is willed by his guru to go to the west. And uh, um, Encinatus, that is where his ashram is, yeah. Encinatus. <clears throat> so he reaches to that shoreline 
and he is walking he suddenly turns around and he looks at the entire picture uh, thing and he says i know this place and he walks through that you know the, the, from his ashram there is a sudden drop into the shoreline she is walking on that shoreline and he turns and he sees that this is exactly what i know so he knows how to walk up and he goes exactly into that little uh, house that was built as if he he had lived there all his life so his students who were around they how do you know that you know we also did not know that there was a path all the way up to the house how did you know that he says i have been having visions of this particular property of this place encinatus for god knows right since my childhood where is kolkata <laughs> where he was born and brought up uh, where is encinatus you know it is on the other side of the globe if you put you know, spread the atlas you know kolkata is here and the the side is and he had a vision of it and between he has to come to india and the world travel and by the time he goes back his first student and he was so inspired by him that he sells all his assets to buy that property as a surprise for him as the first ashram that he builds siddha sankalpa that every single thought that passes by gets fulfilled hence therefore even by mistake even by even as a joke do not wish harm of anybody around why god knows you know by mistake you are in that satvik state and it turns out to happen what you have thought if it is something that which we can control but our goodness is not under our control no on a serious note thought word or deed however bad the other person may have caused our pain or sorrow or misery do not intend any harm to anybody nature will it takes its own course you be simple you be attuned to that self within wish not for anybody's misery in this world therefore the rishi's prayer always has been sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramayah सर्वे भद्रा पश्य कचि दुख भाग भवे लुक एट दि मैग्नानिमिटी ऑफ दि प्रेयर दे डि नॉट प्रे दैट इफ देर इज समबडी हू डज नॉट बिलीव इन मै गॉड दे आर अगेन्स्ट अस सो किल दम the prayer was not that uh, you know sarve hindavah sukhino bhavantu sarve uh, sanatana dharminah uh, niramayah santu no they had transcended all these the, 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 tuchha the, the, you know the uh, cheap stunts of life they had gone to such a magnanimity that every single creature every single being if i am connected to that truth within if i am connected to that uh, uh, purity within may everybody bhavantu sukhina ha may everybody be happy sarve santu niramaya ha amaya is uh, disease niramaya let there be no disease 
and one of the biggest diseases on the ancient most disease is hunger when let there be no hunger or thirst even let them let the entire population let the entire mankind let the entire beings always be satisfied sarve bhavantu